Michael, you are joining us from the Making the Connection conference, which takes place this week in Addis Ababa. You are the director of the Technical Center for Agriculture and Rural Cooperation, CTA. In collaboration with others, your institution has been mainly concerned with the organization of this conference, with its focus on value change and smallholder agriculture. From your perspective, what would be an ideal outcome regarding value chain promotion at the end of the gathering? Well, the, the theme of the conference is making the connection. So, uh, so basically our major aim is to bring together the key players in value chain development, especially in Africa, Caribbean and the Pacific and other developing countries so that they can share experiences and also they can commit to work together to advance value chain uh, development, especially for smallholder farmers. So wh what we'd like to see uh, out coming out of this conference is commitment uh, by different stakeholders to work together, uh, sharing of experiences. We have several uh, excellent examples of uh, value chain initiatives that are working, but at a fairly small scale level but hopefully people can come together and see how some of these experiences could be scaled up. Also, we uh, heard from the participants uh, who registered for this conference before they came here, that 70% of them are coming to make new connections or new contacts during the conference. So we hope that that really happens. Uh, each of the participants will have made some new contacts and, uh, and also some told us that their major aim was to get new ideas of how things work. So hopefully that will be also achieved. So in the end, I think what we'd like to see is much more collaboration by different stakeholders, especially getting the engagement of the private sector, uh, because in many instances, the private sector is not uh, usually involved in these discussions. So I'd like to see a lot more engagement of the private sector we also have representatives of uh, smallholder farmers organizations from Africa, the Caribbean. We'd like to see a lot more engagement of the farmers organizations with private sector, with uh, uh, the development community. So the whole idea is really providing the forum uh, for people to connect with each other, to share experiences, to start new uh, partnerships and initiatives. You just mentioned the ACP countries. What do you think are the policy changes that are required to support profitable smallholder value change in these countries and their national policies, but also on the side of the donors and their policies? Well, the whole issue of the role of government in promoting value chain development is one of the key issues that we're discussing at this conference. And I think uh, the discussions we have had so far uh, very much uh, focusing not really on the need as such on policy because many of these policies exist that governments are keen to promote value chain development to facilitate the smallholder engagement. But the real issue is what's actually happening on the ground. For example, in terms of creating the enabling environment for the private uh, agribusiness, private sector to be engaged in agriculture, the whole rural infrastructure that's needed to facilitate value chain development, for example, rural roads, uh, health facilities, uh, training, education, research, which contribute very much to value chain development in, in, in agriculture. So the whole issue is, uh, you know, that's how people see as an important role of the national governments in, in, in the ACP countries. Uh, when we look at the donor policies, I think, uh, of course, there are all bigger issues of uh, uh, access to markets, of international markets, and uh, what the donors could do from their own countries in terms of facilitating uh, access uh, to markets from SCP countries. But on the other hand, in terms of developing capacity for um, uh, SCP smallholders, uh, in, in terms of developing uh, value chains, I, I, there is a need, I think people feel that there is a need to somehow coordinate the efforts ongoing efforts that are directed at value chain development. People feel that several donors are duplicating efforts. Sometimes there are actually different donors working with the same farmers using different methodologies and, and uh, measuring you know, impact 
which which makes it quite difficult. So the whole idea is how you know the need to coordinate efforts so that so that the duplication is minimized and and the donors can work together in advancing the whole issue of uh, value chain development. People feel that there's a lot of duplication and there are you know different methodologies being used and which makes it quite difficult to measure the impact uh, of this initiative. Maybe looking at best practices, could you provide a practical example of CTA's work with regard to strengthening the position of smallholders in value chains? Well, CTA is a fairly small institution to trying to serve a whole of the ACP region. So the, our strategy and our approach is not very much to work with individual smallholder farmers or groups of farmers, but very much to work with regional institutions that serve uh, the needs of farmers. So, uh, for example, we work very closely with regional farmers organizations uh, who are actively engaged in value chain development. I can give you the example of the Caribbean Farmers Network, CAFAN, which has 500,000 members, and CTA has been very, you know, very active and instrumental in uh, supporting the CAFAN from the beginning for, for many years. And now CAFAN has reached a stage where it's very actively representing smallholder farmers of the Caribbean to negotiate with uh, supermarkets in uh, in Canada and in the in, in UK to be able to supply those supermarkets. So our, our approach is very much strengthening the regional institutions, providing access to knowledge and information, building capacity so that they can serve the farmer constituencies. So our um, Resources are fairly limited and we, we don't very much, I mean, we are not really able to work with individual groups. But as I say, through our interventions uh, uh, within you know, the efforts of the regional institutions, I think we have been quite active and, and uh, effective in uh, influencing uh, value chain development. CTA is a partner institution of the Global Donor Platform for Rural Development. The platform's annual General Assembly in January will focus on the position of smallholder farmers in markets, and this includes value chains. In your opinion, what active role can the platform play in supporting policy changes with regard to value chain promotion? One of the most important uh, contributions that the global uh, donor platform could, could uh, make is uh, along this area of uh, uh, coordinating the efforts of the various donor agencies in their value chain development work. It's, uh, it's clearly evident that many of the donors, their own methodologies, their own approaches, uh, and they're working individually uh, with uh, farmers groups, sometimes duplicating their target groups, which, which has created uh, quite a bit of confusion and uh, uh, and I think limited the, the ability to have clear impact. So if the donor platform can help to uh, coordinate, you know, the donors to maybe move towards uh, aligning their methodologies and approaches so that we can all benefit from a unified approach to achieving uh, uh, value chain development, especially for smallholder farmers. Thank you very much, Michael, for this interview.